Chapter Five of Bob's A Girl Detective. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Bob's A Girl Detective by Grace May North. Chapter Five: A Strange New Home. Lena May's clasp on the hand of her older sister grew unconsciously tighter as they passed a noisy tobacco factory which faced the East River and loomed smoke-blackened and huge. The old Pensinger mansion was just beyond, set far back on what had once been a beautiful lawn reaching to the river's edge, but which now was hard ground and here and there half a dead tree struggling to live without care. A wide road now separated it from the river, which was lined as far up and down as one could see with wharves, to which coal and lumber barges were tied. The house did indeed look as though it were a century old. The windows had never been boarded up, and many of the panes had been broken by stones thrown by the most daring of the street urchins, though, luckily, few dared go near enough to further molest the place for fear of stirring up the haunt. A noble house gone to decay, Gloria said. She had to speak louder than usual because of the pounding and whirring of the machinery in the neighbouring factory. Lena May wondered if anywhere in all the world there were still peaceful spaces where birds sang, or where the only sound was the murmuring of the wind in the trees. Is it never still here? She turned big inquiring eyes towards their guide. Never, Miss Selensky told her. That is, not for more than a minute at a time, between shifts, for when the day work stops, the night work begins. Many of the workers are women, are they not? Glory was looking at the windows of the factory where many foreign women could be seen standing at long tables. They leave their children at the settlement house, they work on the day shift, and the men, if they can be made to work at all, go on at night. Oh, Gloria, this appealingly from the youngest, will we ever be able to sleep in the midst of such noise when we have been used to such silent nights at home? I don't much wonder that you ask, Bobs laughingly exclaimed as she thrust her fingers in her ears, for at that moment a tug on the river, not stones throw away from them, rent the air with a shrill blast of its whistle, which was repeated time and again. You won't mind the noises when you get used to them, Miss Selensky told them cheerfully. I lived on 76th Street, right under the 3rd Avenue L, and the only time I woke up was when the train stopped running. The sudden stillness startles one, I suppose. Lena May said nothing, but she was remembering what Bobs had said when they left the Third Avenue elevated. Now we are to see how the other half lives. Poor other half, the girl thought. I ought to be willing to live here for a time and bring a little of the brightness I have known to their lives, for they must be very drab. Just wait here a minute, Miss Selensky was saying, and I'll run over to the grocery and get the key. She was back in an incredibly short time and found the three girls examining with great interest the heavy front door which had wide panels, a shapely fanlight over them, with beautiful emerald glass panes on either side. I simply adore this knocker, Bobs declared jubilantly. Hark, let's hear the echoes. The knocker was lifted and dropped again, but though they all listened intently, a sudden confusion on the river made it impossible to hear aught else. My private opinion is that Marilyn's ghost would much prefer some other spot for midnight prowls, Bobs remarked, as the old key was being fitted into the queerly designed lock. Imagine a beautiful, sensitive girl of seventy-five years ago trying to prowl down there where barges are tied to soot-black docks and where derricks are empty and coal into waiting trucks. No really romantic ghost, such as I am sure Marilyn Pensinger must be, would care to prowl around here. Miss Selensky smiled at Bob's nonsense. I'm glad you feel that way, she said, for, of course, if you don't believe in the gauche, you won't mind renting the house. At that moment, the derrick of which Bob's had spoken emptied a great bucket of coal with a deafening roar, and a wind blowing from the river sent a cloud of black dust hurling towards them. Quick, duck inside, Bob's cautioned as they all leapt within and closed the door with a bang. Jiminy crickets, she ejaculated, using her favourite tomboy expression. The man who has this place to rent can't advertise it as clean and quiet, a good place for nervous people to recuperate. Then, with a wry face towards her older sister, I can't imagine Gwen in this house, can you? There was a sudden troubled expression in Gloria's eyes. No, dear, I can't. And I'm wondering, in fact, if I have often been wondering this morning, if we ought not to select some place where Gwen and little Lena May would be happier, for, of course, Gwen can't keep on visiting her friends forever. She will have to come home some day. The speaker felt a hand slip into hers, and glancing down, she saw a pleading in the uplifted eyes of the youngest. I'd like to live here, Glow, for a while, if you would. 
little self-sacrificing puss you are gloria smiled at miss selensky then said may we look over the old house and decide if we wish to take it timing's passing and we have much packing to do if we are to return in another day or two although she did not say so bobs and lena may knew that their mothering sister was eager to return to their long island home that she might see gwendolen before her departure the old colonial mansion like many others of its kind had a wide hall extending from the front to the back at the extreme rear was a fireplace with built-in seats in fact to the great delight of bobs who quite adored them a fireplace was found in each of the big barren rooms four of these were on that floor with the old kitchen in the basement and four vast silent rooms above that had been begged chambers in the long ago two there was an attic which they did not visit when they had returned to the front hall bobs exclaimed we might rent just one floor of this mansion and then have a room to spare but the older sister looked dubious i hardly think it advisable to attempt to live in this place she began there is enough room here to home an orphanage and the kiddies wouldn't be crowded either roberta was plainly disappointed oh i say glow haven't you always told us younger girls not to make hasty conclusions and here you have hardly more than crossed the threshold and you have decided that we couldn't make the old house livable now i think this room could be made real cosy how the others laughed bobs what a word to apply to this old high-ceilinged salon with its huge chandeliers and say girls the irrepressible interrupted wouldn't you like to see all of the crystal sparkle when the room is lighted then she confessed perhaps cosy isn't exactly the right word but nevertheless i like the place and now with the door closed it isn't so noisy either it's keen take it from me roberta gloria sighed and now and then i congratulate myself that you have actually reformed in your manner of speech when say glow i'll make a bargain bobs again interrupted i'll talk like the daughter of old dry as dust johnson if you'll take this place now my idea is that we can just furnish up this lower floor make one of the back rooms into a kitchen and dining room put in gas and electricity and presto change there you are living in a modern up-to-date apartment we could lock up the basement and the rooms upstairs and forget that they are there if you are permitted to forget miss selensky added with her pleasant smile then for the first time the girls remembered that the old house was supposed to be supernaturally occupied it was bobs who exclaimed well if that poor girl marilyn pensinger wants to come back here now and then and prowl about her very own ancestral mansion i for one think we would be greatly lacking in hospitality if we did not make her welcome then pleadingly to her older sister glow be a sport take it for a month and give it a try out lena may's big brown eyes wonderingly watched this enthusiastic sister who was but one year her senior but whose tastes were widely different her gentle heart was already desperately homesick for the old place on long island for the gardens that were a riot of flowers from spring until late fall gloria walked to one of the windows and looked out meditatively if this is the only place in the neighbourhood in which we can live she was thinking perhaps we would be better take it and after all bobs might be right this one floor can be made real home-like with the furniture that we will bring and what we do not need can be stored in the rooms overhead bobs was eagerly awaiting her older sister's decision and when it was given the hoydenish girl leaped about the room staging a sort of wild indian dance that must have amazed the two chandeliers which had in the long ago looked down on dignified young ladies who solemnly danced in the munette and yet perhaps the lonely old house was glad and proud to think that it had been chosen as a resident for three girls and that once again its walls would reverberate with laughter and song we must start for home at once gloria said then to miss selensky we will stop on our way to the elevated and tell mr tenowitz that we will take the place for a time and thank you so much for having helped us find something we shall want you to come often to see us bobs was the last to leave and before she closed the heavy old-fashioned door she peered back into the musty dimness and called good-bye old house we're going to have jolly good times all of us together End of chapter five